A while back, I started a series, a playlist, on contemporary views of the Second Amendment. In other words, how did they interpret the language? You know, what did a right to bear arms mean back at the time of the adoption of the Constitution and the ratification and the amendment process that led to the first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights? The first video I did looked at the language of the amendment itself, some historical context. And then the second video, I focused on the largest, the most powerful, the most important of all the states, Virginia. What I want to do in this video is to move on, work my way north, at least at first, to deal with other states and how they viewed the Second Amendment language at the time. I'm going to look at Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. Five states moving from Virginia north up to New York, the Empire State. What do we see in those five states? Maryland, the state just north of Virginia. In its constitution of 1776, and keep in mind that all the colonies had to come up with new constitutions after the Declaration of Independence because the old colonial charters had been made irrelevant. Maryland in 1776 said this, that a well-regulated militia is the proper and national, natural defense of a free government. That's about it. <laughs> That's all they had to say. It, they don't change that or do anything, and I can't find anything about ratification debates with regard to the uh, other Second Amendment issues. So that's all you've got, something about a well-regulated militia. Uh, there's nothing in the Maryland Constitution that says individuals have a right to bear arms or anything like that. That's it for Maryland. Delaware also adopted a new constitution in 1776. It had nothing to say about militias, the right to bear arms, or anything else. In 1987, which is really doesn't have any impact on this debate because I'm talking about contemporary views, Delaware did amend their constitution, change their constitution to say this, a person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of self, family, home, and state, and for hunting and recreational use. Now, that's a much more of a late 20th century view of the Second Amendment debate than it tells us anything about what people in Delaware were thinking back at the time of the American Revolution and the ratification of the Constitution of the United States. New Jersey also adopted a new constitution in 1776, and it had absolutely nothing to say about militias, the right to bear arms, or anything else. Total silence. That brings us to Pennsylvania, another one of the major states in this new republic that's forming, along with Virginia. Constitution, the Pennsylvania Constitution did have something to say when it was adopted in 1776 about the right to bear arms. And this is it, Article 13, that the people have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state. And as standing armies in time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept up, and that the military should be kept under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. If you read that, it looks a lot like what was in the Virginia ratification document. There's basically these multiple parts. And the first part, as was true of Virginia in uh, 1788, is true of Pennsylvania in 1776 that people have a right to bear arms for their own defense. And then also along with that, the state. So Pennsylvania actually supports the interpretation of the Constitution and the ratification and the Second Amendment that I've laid out in my first and second videos. This leads us to New York. Their Constitution, which wasn't adopted till 1777, had nothing to say about the issue of either the right to bear arms or militias. But at the ratification debate in 1788, which was a, a tough and close debate between the Federalists and any Federalists, New York eventually did approve to ratify with assurances from the Federalists that there would be amendments, what becomes the Bill of Rights. And one of the things they wanted to see in that Bill of Rights was this, 
that the people have a right to keep and bear arms. That a well-regulated militia, including the body of the people capable of bearing arms, is for proper, natural, and safe defense of a free state. So if you look at what New Yorkers were saying at their ratification, what Virginians were saying at their ratification, what Pennsylvanians were saying uh, at the time of the adoption of a new constitution in 1776, it's the same thing that you know I've been arguing throughout this whole playlist, the videos in this playlist, that the right to bear arms is a personal right. And that along with that right comes the responsibility to serve in a well-regulated militia. You don't get the right to bear arms because you're in the militia. You get the responsibility to serve in the militia because you have a right to bear arms. So where does that leave us? If you look at Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York, three of the most powerful states in this new union, all three of them have the same view of the Second Amendment, of the concepts embodied in the Second Amendment that we saw in the majority decision in the Heller case for the Supreme Court of the United States. The idea that the right to bear arms is an individual right. It's not linked to membership in the militia. In fact, it's the membership in the militia which becomes a responsibility because you have the right to bear arms. You have to defend the country. The job of the government is to protect your rights. And of course, the government doesn't exist. It's a corporate entity. It, re it depends on the individuals. And since you're armed, you have that primary responsibility to defend the state. Remember at the time of the adoption of the Constitution, this country had a tiny, tiny army and literally no navy. The last ships of the Continental Navy from a revolution had sold off in 1785. We had no navy. There was no Coast Guard until later on in the Washington administration. So we had no Coast Guard, no navy. There obviously was no Air Force. There was no Marine Corps. You had an army which had basically less than two regiments spread around mostly in the Northwest. That's it. I mean, how else were we going to defend ourselves? but with a militia. And if you're going to have a militia, you need people who are armed. And they have responsibility to serve in the militia because the government's protecting their rights, not giving them their rights, but protecting their rights. And that's why they have a responsibility along with the right. But we have these rights, we have these responsibilities that come with it. That's you know, how the system's supposed to work. And that's how the Second Amendment was supposed to work. And at, at the states we've looked at so far, a total of six states, four have basically said, yeah, you know, that's the interpretation. But on the whole, so far, I would argue that if we look at the contemporary views of the initial six states and we look at the language of the Second Amendment, The right to bear arms is an individual right separate from membership in a militia. I mean, to, to take the other view, since we really don't have a militia anymore, you say nobody should have a right to bear arms. And, but th that would fly in the face, not just of the historical record, fly in the face of the understanding of a constitution, understanding of the Second Amendment, and interpretations over the years. It just doesn't make any sense. But that's what we've only looked at six states so far. There are another, another seven of the original 13, and then there were, I'm going to look at the others that come in until about 1826, say the end of the, the generation where these people were still around. Jefferson and uh, Adams die in 1826, and that's when I'm going to stop. You have a comment, leave it, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.